Good morning and welcome to this Father's Day service here at Bedford Baptist Church. It's a delight to have everyone along with us again today, and we hope that this will be a service that will be meaningful to you in your daily walk with Jesus Christ. God, we come this day, which we set aside to honor our earthly fathers, and we ask that each father will know your guidance and love as they care for their children. Help all fathers to be more like you as they receive grace to handle life situations in your love. Bless each of us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For our children's time today, we're going to be talking about, of course, Father's Day. And uh, we want to wish all of our dads a happy birthday and our happy Father's Day. And you want to say thank you to your dad for all that he does for you. Now, what I want us to do this morning in our children's time is to think about some of the things that your dads do for you. Or that person who fulfills that role of, of dad, maybe it's a grandfather uh, or someone else. But that special man who takes care of you, uh, who provides for you, provides a roof over your head and food on the table, and, and safety, makes things safe for you, they care for you, uh, they teach you all kinds of neat things on how to make things and fix things, and, and you get to follow them around and learn a lot about how to, to make things work. And then the really neat thing is you need to thank your dad for knowing about you. Really wanting to know you and understand you and know how you think and how you feel. Dads do that because they love you. But there's a heavenly father. Those are, that's our earthly fathers. But our heavenly father, if you can believe it, loves you even more than that. Our Heavenly Father, even dads have a Heavenly Father who loves them too 
And our Heavenly Father loves you. Think about what he does for you. Well, he knows you. Our scripture today says that he knows you so well, he knows the number of hairs on your head. Now that's pretty good. He also cares about you. Also in our scripture today it says that Jesus, uh, that God cares about the, the sparrow that falls. He knows that, even one little insignificant sparrow that falls. And he knows, if he knows that, he knows a lot about you. And he understands you. And he knows how you feel. He knows how you think. And he protects us. He provides for us. All because he really, really loves you. So be thankful for your earthly father. And say thank you today to him. But also say thank you to your heavenly father. Because God loves you too. Shall we pray? Thank you God for our, our dads. Thank you for what they mean to us and the special place they have in our hearts. But thank you also for being our Heavenly Father who loves all of us, even loves our dads, and takes care and protects all of us. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Our missions time together. Uh, today we're highlighting... Uh, the Ross family, George and Joy Ross, who are serving in New Orleans as church planters, and they have a lofty goal. They are going to establish or set up or put into action 120 churches in the next 10 years. That's a lot of churches. That's, you, know, you do the math on that, you'll figure out that's, that's about one a month for the next 10 years. And it's hard enough to start one over one or two years, but they're gonna do one a month in the region of New Orleans. And so we're praying for them. And we're praying that they're gonna be successful and that their uh, church plants are gonna be highly successful as they share the good news of Jesus Christ in that region of our country. Today we remember all of our missionaries, but certainly we remember the Rosses as they are sharing uh, the good news by starting some new works there in New Orleans area. Thank you for what you are giving very, very faithfully week to week. Uh, our, our offerings continue to remain very strong as we seek to serve the Lord and to, to worship the Lord in this way. Shall we pray? Our God, we ask that you would speak to us this day. On this day that we set aside to honor our earthly fathers, speak plainly to our consciences if we've been ungrateful for our blessings. Forgive us if we have caused heavy hearts among those whom we love. Speak to our hearts with the truth that our humble minds can understand. And God, in this world of chaos, may we all live in your peace, which passes all understanding. Grant strength and healing to those who are suffering and who are sick today. Grant comfort to those who are mourning, especially in this week in our church family. For all who are gathered today, may we have a fresh awareness of your Holy Spirit's watch care over us in this time. For these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
very much. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. That's a very familiar uh, uh, hymn and song for many, many folks. And the passage of Scripture that that was based on, that song was based on, is over in Matthew, the 10th chapter, where we're going to be looking this morning. I'm just going to focus on a, a few verses. Matthew 10, 29 is where we will begin. Jesus said, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside the Father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Now, out of the thousands of birds that Jesus could have chosen, he chose the one bird that even dedicated bird watchers choose to ignore. And that is the common sparrow. But God takes note of the humble sparrow. That's the message here. If he takes note of that sparrow, then he certainly is going to be looking after and caring for those who've been created in his image, like you and like me. Sparrows are not an endangered species on anyone's list. They are literally everywhere. And in biblical times, they were considered as food for the extreme poor. Because you could purchase these sparrows at the market, two for a penny. And, and uh, that was extremely cheap. And, and that penny would buy you more than it'll buy you now. Also, if you were very poor, you could substitute a sparrow for one of the the animals that were normally uh, presented as a sacrifice at the temple, like a lamb or a goat or a bull. You, if you were real poor, you could still have your sins forgiven if you brought an offering of some sparrows. Two sparrows for a penny. How many folks today won't even bend over to pick up a penny, even if it's shiny? They won't even bend over to pick it up because it's kind of worthless in our day as it was in their day <clears throat> and a sparrow is about as worthless as you if you have a worthless penny and you can buy two sparrows for a worthless penny that tells you how worthless a sparrow is and was they're dirty they tend to have fleas they reproduce abundantly um, they don't have a song that's pretty and they're not pretty now, there's no color uh, they're just kind of yucky birds. And they're scavengers. They, they try to find their sustenance in, in the leftovers from human beings. <clears throat> so we could have understood it if Jesus had said, God knows when every eagle falls. Because the eagle is such a majestic creature. But that's not the point. The point that Jesus is trying to make here is that God cares about the least and the lowest of us all. Now that is an amazing teaching. God sees the sparrow when it falls. What I'd like for us to do for just a few moments this morning is to try to understand a little bit better what that means for our lives today. First of all, it means this. Whatever Whatever trial that we're experiencing or that we're going through, God is aware of it and God cares about it. Verse 29 again, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside the Father's care. Even the hairs of your head are numbered, Jesus said. So don't be afraid. Fear is something that we all experience. Fear is something we don't like to admit. We like to give it a different name. We like to call it concern. We like to call it worry. We like to call it anxiety. Anything but fear. We have said very often, recently, that we have good reason to be fearful in these days in which we live. We've got political chaos going on. We've got economic worries. And has anyone forgotten the fact that we're living in the middle of a global pandemic? 
we have a legitimate threat to our lives. I remember uh, a few weeks back, probably a month or so back now, uh, back when you were having demonstrations that were okay, and people carrying guns in those de demonstrations. But anyway, that's another story. But back in those demonstrations, I remember seeing a truck. I believe it was in Washington. And, and it was outside the White House. And on the side of the truck were these words. It said, Jesus is my vaccine. And I remember looking at that just sort of scratching my head, thinking, who would put that? And then I started thinking about it. There's an element of truth to that. If you want to call Jesus a vaccine, uh, he is our vaccine for eternal life. Yes, absolutely. Our only and all we need. He is our, our, uh, our hope and our assurance. But Jesus also gave us a brain to use. And he expects us to use that brain to keep ourselves safe in, in a world filled with stupidity. And, and that's a constant, ongoing thing. These people who are reckless with your health are kind of like the less than intelligent religious folks who live over in, in uh, uh, eastern Kentucky and West Virginia and the mountain area and, and down in uh, uh, extreme West Virginia or West, Western Virginia, uh, where they have this practice in some of the churches called snake handling. Have you heard of that? These people say, oh, you know, I can take this poisonous snake. And they, they quote scripture and say, I can lift up this poisonous viper and God will protect me and keep me from harm. That's kind of how these folks appear to me who want to play recklessly with the pandemic. Well, how does that work out for those snake handlers? <laughs> Not too good. Usually they end up being bitten and many of them die. God gave us a brain to use. But here's the question. Here's the question I think we need to wrestle with in our day and time. We do need to use that brain to stay safe and to stay healthy. But how do you do that and still not be burdened so much by fear that the fear killed you? See, that's the tough part, isn't it? That's the balance that we have to try to find. This passage, I believe, goes a long way toward helping us to know that our loving Father is always mindful of our needs and He will give us peace and even joy in the midst of our trials, whatever they might be. For His eye is on the sparrow and I know He watches over me. God knows us so well. Verse 30, God knows us so well that He knows the number of hairs on our heads. He's gotta be pretty good at subtra subtraction for my hairs because that's a, a daily chore. But we think that we're alone in the face of all of our problems. But we need to remember that God is closer to us than the air that we breathe. God knows us. God knows our needs. And God really cares. That's what Jesus, the Son of God, is teaching us this morning in this passage. And we need to listen. We are God's children. God's not going to abandon us because God truly cares. That's the first thing we need to see from this teaching this morning. Second thing we need to see is this. Knowing that we are loved by God, knowing that God cares for us, gives us the freedom to live. Even in the midst of a pandemic, we can have peace and we can have joy we realize that this life is God's gift. And we should do everything that we can do to honor it and to use it wisely. But our freedom comes from knowing that his eye is on the sparrow, the least and the lowest. And if his eye is on the sparrow, I know he's watching over me. We are in a daily walk with God and Jesus Christ. Whatever our circumstances are, whatever our trials, whatever our troubles, we have found the meaning to life. We get it. 
We're in right relationship to God. We're God's children. And whatever happens, He's going to take care of us. God cares. And knowing that God cares gives us the freedom to live our lives using our brains. He gives us the freedom to live our lives. The third thing, the third teaching I think that we can see in this, this passage this morning. Ultimate freedom. Freedom to, to go about our daily tasks without fear oppressing us and killing us is one thing. But the ultimate freedom of life the joy in life, the peace in life, comes from trusting your life to God. There's where it really happens. The message from our scripture is this. We don't need to fear life or death. We don't need to fear tomorrow or today. We can live faith-filled lives knowing that God is with us and that God truly does love us. Freedom comes from knowing that no matter what the circumstances or the attacks of the world, God never leaves us. God never forsakes us. He will be with us to walk through that trial and walk through that trouble. No matter what the outcome, He'll be with us as we walk through that difficulty. Holding our hand all the way. So we trust in the God of creation who sees every sparrow and who knows each one of us so intimately that he knows the number of hairs on our heads. And Jesus said, if you have faith, if you have faith the size of a little tiny mustard seed, if you have just that much faith, you can make it in this life. You can, you can move mountains, Jesus was trying to tell us. Some of those difficult mountains that are in front of us and that we're having to deal with. Now this faith is not something that we earn. We don't go to school to, to attain a degree in it. This faith is a gift from God to each one of us. But the only way that you can get it is to just receive it. Trust in God and receive the faith that he's seeking to give to you right now. And a simple prayer will do. When I, when I think of this prayer, I like the illustration that we have in scripture over in Mark, the ninth chapter, the 21st verse. Jesus is, is uh, he, he meets this man, a dad on his father's day. Jesus meets this dad who's brought his son to Jesus to see if Jesus will heal his son. And here's how it goes. Jesus asked the father, he said, how long has it been since this happened to your son? And the dad says, oh, it's been this way from childhood. If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And then Jesus said, all things are possible for one who believes. And the father of that little boy cried out, I believe. Help my unbelief. Maybe that's your prayer. I know that's my prayer uh, from time to time. Life is sometimes bizarre. <laughs> These days, it seems always to be bizarre. And fear might want to keep us awake at night. If only we could trust God, who's watching over the sparrows, and we could pray that prayer, God, I believe. Just, just help my unbelief. That's a prayer that God will hear and that God will honor. He knows our hearts when we pray that prayer and he'll answer. Verse 29 again, are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are numbered. So don't be afraid, you're worth far more than many sparrows. The God who provides for the sparrows is certainly interested in you. You were created in God's image. You're worth far more to him than, than the sparrows and he's watching over the sparrows. So just think of how much he cares for you created in his image. 
We can live our lives not paralyzed by fear, but with care and precautions. Uh, we can live our lives not being foolish and reckless in our actions, but living carefully, thoughtfully, safely, even in the midst of a global pandemic, with the peace of God in our hearts, because we trust in Him, which passes all understanding. Our benediction this morning is taken from Romans, the 15th chapter, the 13th verse. Shall we pray? May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Amen.